Okay, now this one gets a little more complicated because we have all these blasters. All right, so I think this one was a blue blaster. So let me go. I'm going to create another saber. Though it's not really a saber. I like this uh, bluish green color. Give it a name. All right, so let's give this a name. I'm going to call this one Blaster Blue. And I want these shooting. Let me go back. I want these shooting right away. He brings the gun up. I want lots of action going on, so let me take my this one. We're going to show it just coming out of the gun. All right, I like this blue-green color. So, if I need to edit that, I want to edit the direction. So I want that to look like it's flying right at this actor here. So let's take that, and then I usually, what I usually do is I I put the mouse right on the, uh, the cross cursor, the crosshair cursor, right on top of the point here. And then I roll the film, film roll the film forward one frame. And then I can go from there, click again, roll the film forward another frame, click again. We want to make these a little shorter as they go off into the distance, so we're getting a 3D effect that they're getting farther away. All right, just a look. Should look okay. So there you see it going and going away. Now we want to show a block on that one, so I'm going to put a clash in. So that's not great, but sometimes we like to have have it shooting off after it hits. So you can do a couple frames. I'm just going to do a couple. It disappears. All right, so here we go. Let's take a look at that. I'm just rolling through. Blaster comes in, hits. Gets, probably put a couple more clashes on there. Let's put another big clash. All right, now I'm going to move that over. Some things you can change with the clash over here. Radius, how big and how the biggest circle it is, and the strength kind of changes the intensity and the color. So we want to have that one really flash. All right. Okay. Another thing I want to show you is this um, this actor in the back here is shooting this red blaster out at this actor. To make it look more realistic, because he's pretty far away here, and then the the bolts are going to be uh, really close to this actor. What what I did is I created two red sabers. So I'm going to use this one here, and I'm going to call it near. Let's create another one. We call this red far. I think I just used a red. Alright, so this is the red far. The red far is going to be much smaller. And make this a little smaller. Alright, so let's add some of those. So here we have the actor back there. So I'm going to click and drag in the direction and make it short. It's the red far. And then roll to the next frame. Do it again. Make it a little bigger. Let's roll to the next frame. Make it a little bigger. And then I'm going to switch to my red near. Oops. Actually, I didn't want it. I need to advance. Now I need to advance to the next frame. Make this bigger. We're coming in. Do 
that, and then we can put our clash on top of it. Actually, that hides it, but well, we always like having a couple clashes for each one. Okay, so now let's roll that back. You see that small, and it gets larger. Now, when this is playing, that's going to fly by, and you really won't notice that it that it jumped and got so big. So you don't have to make like two or three of them, have it gradually get larger. That works pretty well. The only thing I don't like is I don't see much glow. So let me go back to red small or far. See if I can give it a little more glow. A little bit, yeah, it looks better. Another thing where I was talking about with naming um just go on to that. Each frame for each item in the frame is shown here. And to select one, I can click here. So let's go back. Here's a frame where I have this actor saber. I have that blaster bolt coming in, which is red near, and also have the clash. So that's why naming them makes them easier. You can see in this list which one is being drawn and what order. This is also a good example for the let me show you the mass tool. So I want to go with the my purple saber. I'm going to do and draw one on here. Now obviously this is a problem because we're drawing on top of film. So we have what's called the mask, which will basically make a rectangle. And it'll hide anything behind it. So these frames will be flying by when you're watching a movie at 12 frames per second or whatever your frame rate is. So you don't have to be that that accurate with your drawing. Any little imperfections you're probably not going to see. Like here, I'm not in the right spot, so actually I would want to go back and cover that up, but you probably wouldn't see, see that, that edge showing anyway. It's not going to be noticeable as it's going by quickly. So that was our mask, and so that's basically how the process is done. We're going to go through the whole movie and put all the blasts on here, put all the, uh, put all the effects in. And when that's finished, we go up to here, we select Render Movie. I'm going to call this Part 3, let's say, uh, let's call it Part, part 3 uh, with effects save it on my desktop so it's going to go off and render this video it's going to add the effects in so you're going to get a nice movie a uh, quick time movie that you can bring in the iMovie and put your creation together so in the next part of the series we'll show you how to use iMovie to add your sound effects and some titles and things like that